All right, Giants Nation, if you're anything like me and you've got a ton of Giants fans around you, you probably have friends or associates with different opinions on what we should do as an organization. And one of the most interesting talking point has always been about Daniel Jones. What should we do with Daniel Jones? People are saying that Drew should start and Daniel Jones should not play the entire season because of an injury clause. And personally, I feel like it's coming from a part of the fan base that's been obsessed with replacing Daniel Jones, and they've been getting trolled for months by the organization. And me personally, I don't really look at the quarterback situation too much because it's out of my control. I can't force John Mara or Joe to get rid of Daniel Jones just because I don't like him or I don't believe in him. But there is this small part of the fan base that has been obsessed with the quarterback since Joe took the job and Dable took his job. So get Joe as the new GM and Joe declines DJ's fifth year option and you're jumping for joy. This minority part of the fan base, which even though they're in the minority that they're loud, so they're jumping up and down. And you know, from day one of me joining all the Giants groups, I've ran into different individuals that were just like, hey, we're moving on from Daniel Jones. We got a new GM. He dropped the fifth year option for a reason, and then we make it to the playoffs. That was probably the first L that the replace the Daniel Jones group took because if we did bad, you would think that we would, you know, take a quarterback in that draft. Now you would have to do really bad because I didn't like any of the uh, the quarterbacks after the top two quarterbacks. So it's like you'd have to be very, very bad. And the Giants historically have not been in that area of where, you know, Carolina and, and the, the Texans were. Cause you know, people, as people always talk about CJ, but I'm like, we just, we're never in a position to draft them anyway. So you get to the playoffs, you re-sign Daniel Jones and you take another L because prior to Daniel Jones signing, everybody was saying that we wouldn't sign Daniel Jones. And the Giants were trying to get a deal with Saquon Barkley done first. We hate to acknowledge that that was a thing because he, you know, we ended up not signing him. So we say, oh, you know, we chose Daniel Jones over Saquon Barkley, but the Giants did not choose Daniel Jones over Barkley. They just had their price set for Barkley and Barkley didn't like it. So they went and they signed Daniel Jones. Now, the biggest problem with signing Daniel Jones is not the fact that we signed Daniel Jones, it's how we signed Daniel Jones. So prior to signing Daniel Jones, John Mara comes out and says that we did everything we could to screw up Daniel Jones. And if you take a step back and take off your Daniel Jones hater lens or just, you know, view it from like, a, you know, a non-biased standpoint. So I'm not viewing it as somebody who likes Daniel Jones because I don't. The Giants drafted this guy six and a lot of us agree that that was a mistake. We shouldn't have done that. Assuming that Washington wouldn't have drafted him, but that's the guy they wanted, right? So they took the guy that they wanted six and some people were saying, hey, you know, even Stephen A at the time was like, oh, that's what you want to do then, you know, we don't like it, but that's your guy, that's your guy. Well, let's just say we got him in a later round, we could have gotten a better player than Daniel Jones at, at six, so the Giants did that. Then, we historically have had bad offensive lines, and he gets hurt. Uh, that's partly on him, but mostly on the Giants. Your, your job is to make sure you have the, the players around your quarterback to keep him healthy, so share the blame there. But then you hired Joe Judge, who was a terrible coach. And even though Daniel Jones didn't have a great first season on the Pat Sherman, he did throw more touchdowns. He just had to get rid of the fumbles. So that bad hire is all on the Giants. And we missed that wide receiver. You know, we wanted Smith. We, we you know, the Eagles stole him from us. Smith was a great route runner. Smith is obviously a better wide receiver than Wandell, Slayton. And any other wide receiver that we drafted, including Hyatt. Hyatt is not known for route running, which is why he got disrespected by the Cowboys coach. You guys should know better. Somebody said, oh, we got Daniel Jones, another weapon. No, 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 no. You got Daniel Jones, the second weapon of his career. The only other weapon was Saquon Barkley. Wandell is not a weapon. Hyatt is not a weapon. He's a deep threat. And Wandell is actually a pretty good route runner, but he's still Wandell. Like he, I think he was like the third best wide receiver in his draft class. Like. We're not gonna make it seem like we're just been giving them studs. Like they're they're good wide receiver threes at the moment. Maybe one of them would develop into a wide receiver two with neighbors. But again, Giants missed that wide receiver, missed that offensive line, you missed that coach, you changed a whole bunch of positions. Of course, your quarterback from Duke, who most of us think, including myself, 
wasn't that great to begin with, of course he's going to get derailed as a quarterback. Problem with the Giants is the Giants like him. So unlike other teams, they don't move on from Daniel Jones because they like him. It's been really hard for, st for fans to stomach, but they like Daniel Jones. That's why he's still here. I'm sorry to tell you that. And your opinion of Daniel Jones, whether you like or hate him, doesn't matter. Because you're just going to go to games like good little fans anyways. So as long as you're out there spending money, the Giants don't care. So L taken, we re-signed Daniel Jones. Then we go into the next season and you say, oh, Daniel Jones better play well because we paid him. And I'm looking at you guys like, well, if you thought he sucked before, I don't know what paying him is going to do. I mean, we went out, we got Darren Waller, who, if I'm being honest, I thought that he was going to stay healthy. I didn't think he was going to come out looking washed. I will admit Daniel Jones was terrible last season, but so was Darren Waller. Darren Waller did not look good. But then when you go back and look at his numbers, you can see that he fell off. Darren Waller was not the Darren Waller we thought we were going to get. So again, we're not we're not hitting um, you know, where we think we're hitting. Remember Paris Campbell? We thought Paris Campbell was going to be good too. He was terrible with all three quarterbacks. Statistically, Tyrod Taylor was the best quarterback last year, but all the quarterbacks were asked. So it wasn't just Daniel Jones. Like, yes, he was asked, but so were the other quarterbacks. The whole offense was asked. I don't know why we kept our offensive coordinator. He wanted to go and we kept him, but y'all took an L because Daniel Jones went down and I heard people say stuff. Well, I saw people say stuff like, Jones is playing, we would have finished with the, the, the top three pick. And I'm like, not really because Daniel Jones went down and the other quarterbacks played well because they had Saquon Barkley. They're not playing well without Saquon Barkley. If Saquon Barkley was done for the year, if we traded Barkley, we would be drafting top three. So we took an L there by having Barkley come back and Andrew Thomas come back. If you're thinking from the mindset that we need to replace Daniel Jones, not as a fan, I'm a fan. So of course I like winning. I'm not complaining, but the guys who wanted to replace Daniel Jones, they took an L because you win too many games and then we don't like JJ McCarthy because honestly, I don't feel like he's that good. I feel like he'd be better in Minnesota's situation because he's got better weapons around him. We are now going into a situation where our wide receivers will be better because of neighbors and then hopefully uh, Daniel Jones or Locke or whoever just does the job of getting them the ball and that's it. We're, we're overthinking it. That's what we're doing right now. But either way, the draft has passed and a lot of you guys went into the draft saying that we we're going to get a new quarterback and it was probably going to be JJ McCarthy. Some of you guys wanted no knees Michael Pinnox, which is crazy to me, especially at pick six. And... We have no quarterback. And, you know, people are saying prior to the draft, we go in, we don't draft a quarterback, that this draft is going to be bad because we don't have a quarterback. And, yeah, we, we left the draft without a quarterback. So another L for team replaced Daniel Jones. Um, I, it couldn't be me personally. Like, I just can't focus on Daniel Jones. I can't just wake up and the first thing I think about is fuck Daniel Jones. Like, that, that is just not my thing. Like, there's just so much going on with the Giants. But this is always the... Trendiest topic to talk about is Daniel Jones and how people think that Daniel Jones is going to do. But I'm going to talk about the fact that a lot of y'all been wanting to replace Daniel Jones and y'all been taking back to back L's, man. So re signed him. Our GM says it was a mistake not taking the fifth year option. You go, you know, we, so we pay him and he stinks and gets injured. And we don't finish top three, so we can't get any of the top three quarterbacks because. Saquon Barkley. It's literally Saquon Barkley and Andrew Thomas. If you think that we won games strictly because of Tyrod Taylor and uh, DeVito, then you're slow. You haven't realized the fact that teams, they don't, I'm not going to say they respect the Giants offense when Barkley's there, but they play us different when Barkley is on the field versus when Barkley's not on the field. So it's not just a Daniel Jones thing. It's the way you constructed a team, which is why I'm glad that we now have Malik Neighbors. You construct a team around a wide receiver that can be all over the place. You don't just construct a team around one single running back, and then when he gets hurt, your season is the real. Now we've got a running back room, which hopefully they can be productive if the line can actually create holes, because we got some good young backs that came in this season, but we'll have to see how it plays out. A lot of y'all think we're going to be rolling out with Devin Singletary, but I think you're wrong. But for the Giants fans that are just like, you know, so focused on Daniel Jones, I had somebody tell me something like, oh, we're never going to be good until we get rid of Daniel Jones. I'm like... What? Did you see the 49ers situation? There was a point where they couldn't figure out which quarterback was going to be the starter. And they still had a great defense and they still had all of the pieces around those quarterbacks. They had three quarterbacks at one point and they still figured it out. You guys are making excuses for the for the, the organization. 
and then you complain and say, oh, we're making excuses with Daniel Jones. Um, It is what it is, man. Nobody's making excuses for anybody. But at the end of the day, the Giants are, they've been the biggest problem. It's, they, they've been their own problem. They've literally signed players they shouldn't have signed, drafted players where they shouldn't have drafted them. And, you know, that if you're suffering, you're suffering because of what the Giants did, not because of the player. It's always been on the Giants.